the Puyallup-based artist who generally focuses on depicting black culture as well as cityscapes in his paintings. Rodney King says he simply paints what he loves. You may have seen his work featured in galleries and at art shows around our region. He joins us this morning from his art studio down in Puyallup. Good morning to you, Rodney. Good morning, Tyron and Steve. How are you guys doing today? We're good. Thanks for joining us. So tell us how long have you been creating art and why did you get into it? Most definitely. Uh, you know, I started creating art like in, when I was a kid, like in high school. You know, I did some pieces at Federal Way High School where, where I graduated from in 97. And I did a piece that, you know, won first prize at, you know, the Puyallup uh, Art Fair. By that time, I was in the Marine Corps and I didn't even realize I won first prize. My, my sister had told me. And then um, I kind of went away from painting for a long time or drawing, you know, because I just started painting like uh, during COVID. So like back in 2020, um, I was drawing some uh, some stuff on my kitchen counter and, you know, drawing it, it's real taxing on your hand and everything. So I just got tired of it. And so my wife was like, you know, you ever thought about painting? And uh, I was like, you know, it's got to be just like drawing. And then so I just started painting then and posting stuff like on my IG and it's made it out of my house and out of my garage into other people's homes. Love that. Just awesome. Rodney, you have such a talent just looking at some of your work in those photos there. You know, we mentioned that your work tends to focus on the black experience. So where did you get your inspiration from? And, and tell us about your artistic process. Most definitely. It's like from a lot of books that I read, you know, like the autobiography of Malcolm X, you know, Up From Slavery by Booker T. Washington, um, The Soul of Black Folks by W.E.B. Du Bois. My show currently is called uh, Native Son a book by one of my favorite authors, Richard Wright. Um, and so it, it comes from a lot of books. It comes from watching a lot of documentaries. It comes from listening to a lot of podcasts. It comes from just growing up as an African-American male, you know, in America. Um, my influence just comes from my daily life, my family, you know, my loved ones, just life experiences, you know, in general. You mentioned you get some inspiration from the books you read, and I also noticed some of your paintings feature pop culture references, kind of paying tribute to the greats in music and sports. I see, I see like a Jet Magazine reference mm -hmm. behind you. I saw Jet Magazine in my household growing up. So talk about why that representation is important to you. You know, Jet Magazine, Ebony Magazine was always on the coffee, coffee table, you know, growing up. And just looking at like the black culture through these magazines, showing us in a positive light, all the stories of like the March on Washington, you know, uh, Muhammad Ali, uh, Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson, Anita Baker, you know, the top albums. Mm. Um, I just love to show our, the experience of African-Americans in the most positive light. You know, um, I posted a Jet magazine and the CEO from Jet, you know, actually hit me and we started messaging each other on um, Instagram because it had caught his attention as well. So it's just um, some stuff that is nostalgic. It brings us, you know, to the glory days and I'm just going to always show us in the most positive light possible. Okay. I love that you guys made that in, that connection over Instagram, <laughs> you know, social media bringing people together. We should mention you have a solo exhibition coming up this weekend. Uh, when and where is that and what people can expect? Yeah, um, I got a solo exhibit called uh, Native Sun. It's going to be at the Labor Temple. We have our art walk tonight from 6 to 9 p.m. And um, it's, it's at 2800 First Avenue, Seattle, Washington, 98121. And we're going to have some um, great artists in there. We have like a market where you can buy individual prints, apparel, stickers, uh, and just all kind of different art pieces that you can take home and to have like a piece of, you know, what I create. And on um, the Wonder Collective uh, website, you can purchase my uh, art pieces as well. They have like a gallery that I have like 30 paintings on there currently. And it's a one-stop shop, you know, to have like a Rodney King original in your home. Very cool. Yeah, I, I saw some of those pieces on the website that uh, that I would definitely consider purchasing, Rodney. Uh, when we first launched this show, we had another local artist on, Christopher Coleman, and I noticed you two know each other, but I also noticed that a lot of artists in the Puget Sound region connect and collaborate. What is that experience like being a part of such a 
uh, an art collective and and having each other's support I think it's just really cool like there's no competition it doesn't seem like that at least mm. <laughs> yeah no competition at all and we call ourselves the brush squad oh. and so Chris Coleman, you know, um, I knew him as a kid, and we reconnected through the arts. Mm. And we got a whole collective of, like, some great artists that, you know, that we band together when we do multiple shows together. We started off doing um, a show called Old to Hip Hop at Base Camp Studios last summer in July. And it's, you know, great artists like uh, Myron Carey, Christopher Coleman. We have Troy Miles, Vincent Kill, Yolanda, um, Miriam. It's just uh, so many great artists that we work together and we go from like Renton, from Seattle to Tacoma, Belltown, and we're just basically trying to unite everybody through art. We got so many different shows coming up in the future and um, it's just gonna be good. We're gonna take it where Jacob and um, Ernie left off, you know, in regards to African-American in art. I love how the artists just support each other. Since Tyra mentioned the uh, jet piece behind you, I'm noticing uh, two others over your left and right shoulders. Can you tell us about the, the piece to your left and the one to the right? Okay, so I'm working on a show that will be at uh, Access Gallery, you know, in June, July, and August. Um, and so I'm gonna have like a large body of my work. This one over here to my left would be a Louis Armstrong piece that I'm working on. So what I did was take like an old Louis Armstrong poster, his show posters from like the 1920s, and then I would take a picture of Louis Armstrong that would just have basically his upper body, and then I put like, you know, some legs on there, and then I threw in pop culture by having him wear Penny Hardaway's um, second signature shoe. And then on this side over here, I have a Dizzy Gillespie, and it, you know, it's kind of hidden by my chair, but um, it's an old picture that I had of him. Same thing with the show poster, you know, from one of his shows from like the 20s or 30s. And then I have him with some Jordan 5s on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mixing the past and the present. Yes. Super cool. Thank you so much, Rodney. Congrats to you on your success and looking forward to checking out your, uh, your, your, your solo shows and all the ones you've got down the line. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for your time. It's been my pleasure. Nice to meet you. Thanks, Roddy. Well, if you'd like to see more of Rodney's work, just scan the QR code on your screen. That will take you directly to comonews.com slash hotlinks. There, you'll find a link to Rodney's website. Incredible. It is. And I love how he, you know, shows his art and sort of uses